This is Rhythm Reader Bootcamp, Season 2, Episode 3. We are delving deep into the world of 16th notes and 16th note syncopation. So far, we have covered the 16th note subdivision, what it is, how to talk about it with other musicians without getting laughed at. We've also looked at the possibility of having four 16th notes in a row and how that feels in with other note values and their associated rests. Today, in this episode, we are going to talk about what happens when we combine two 16th notes and an eighth note in one beat's worth of music. If you want more examples to practice from, then you can pick up a copy of the Rhythm Ready Bootcamp Volume 2 ebook via the link in the video description below. Let's take a look at these new fragments. So if we think about having two sixteenth notes and an eighth note in the space of one beat's worth of music, one quarter note's worth of music, we get three different possibilities. Here they are. Now in this episode, we're going to look at the first two and that's because the last one is a little bit more complex and deserves its own episode to itself. We're gonna jump in with the one that I call fragment two, which is gonna be two sixteenth notes and an eighth note. So if we take the first fragment that we looked at, four sixteenth notes in a row, and we tie the last two together, we effectively get the same sound as having an eighth note there. If we just clap through this, it's gonna sound like this, and we'll get the sound of this new fragment. So we're gonna go, 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. So we're sustaining that last part of the beat from the end. Let's put this into context with some eighth notes. We're going to get really confident at pushing it through different points in the bar. Let's have a look at this. Again, I might just start by tapping this out rather than playing it on the bass. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, and 4, and 1. straightforward. Let's try two lines of this with the metronome with the bass. This is going to be 70 BPM. Here we go. Two bars counted. One, two, three, four. As before, what we're going to do now is take that fragment and put it in context with other basic note values, our previous fragment, fragment number one, and associated rest values. Let's take a second to look at this example. Just have a glance through that, make sure that everything is all right. If you need to pause the video and go through anything, then do that now. One, two, three, four. So what happens now if we take fragment number two and we flip it around so we now have one eighth note and two sixteenths. This might be familiar to some of you already. This rhythm, one and a two and a three and a four and a, gives us a galloping sound if you have lots of them back to back. Any Iron Maiden fans will be intimately acquainted with this sound. Let's try our initial exercise of putting it in all the different places in the bar. One, two, three, four. So 
the real fun starts if we have fragment two and fragment three in the same piece of music next to each other. Very easy to confuse them when you're sight reading at speed. So let's have a go at just doing that thing. We've got fragments one to three, some basic note values and some rests in there as well. So again, I would recommend taking a little bit of time, just looking through it, scanning through it. You might even be able to pre-hear those rhythms in your head, which is great. That means that things are moving in the right direction. Let's have a two bar counting. One, two, three, four. So that brings us to the last possible permutation of one eighth note and two sixteenth notes, which looks like this. And because that's a little bit more complicated than the previous two that we just looked at, it gets its own episode. I'll see you there.